Are you ready to go? Yeah. All right, we're going to dig right into it. Most of you know our story out of poverty for nine years. I remember the night that the banker called. We lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Mr. Cassie, did you know that you bounced 16 checks last night? Really? How'd that happen? I don't understand how that. I don't understand. Yeah, there was no money in the account. That's how it happened, right? 16 checks in one night. You know, it's like, but we, we lived a life of desperation is how I want to say it. Desperation for nine years. And what I mean by that is when you have to go to pawn shops to buy your meal and you have to uh, just survive. I mean, if you went into our house, everything was either found alongside the streets in the trash or bought at a garage sale for 10 or 20 bucks. The refrigerators were all the avocado green that we bought for 30 bucks that were 25 years old. Uh, you know, the mattresses were out of a nursing home. I mean, everything that the electric guy came every so often about once a month to turn the power off. You haven't got the check yet? I don't understand that, you know. Don't look at me like that. You know how it is. Just, I hope you don't know how it was because it was so bad that I was on medication, if you call it that, antidepressant medication to cope with my panic attacks that I was having emotionally as the father of the, my family and my little kids trying to survive, live in this little farmhouse. And I didn't have any vision. I didn't have any, I didn't really have a future. So Lamentations 317 is my, this was my life at that point. It says, I have been deprived of peace for I have forgotten what prosperity is. You got babies to feed, you can't feed them. Uh, you know, I don't care how great it feels in church and you want to dance and shout and love God. I'm telling you, if you can't pay your bills and take care of the things, you can't have peace. You, I, I believe you can't have peace unless finances are there. I just believe that's how it is. And so, you know, you can talk about a lot of different issues in people's lives, but money affects every one of them. So we need to talk about it. So, you know, fear, I lived a life of fear. That's what panic attacks is. I, I lived in a life of fear. And fear is phobia, you know, you always phobias. And fear is irrational. In fact, the Bible says it's torment. And everything you see, you know, you got a hangnail, oh no, that'll kill you. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything is, is exaggerated like, you know, you know what I'm talking about? And fear speaks, it's not a good language. It's just, it's talking, you know, bad things are going to happen. <clears throat> so this story kind of illustrates really where we were at when I had this tooth infection. And so I just took Tylenol, you know, like everyone does when you have a tooth infection. And so no big deal, except, you know, I couldn't sleep. I was taking Tylenol, you know, every four hours and had this guy do a root canal and all that. So at four, I couldn't sleep for two days. So you ever read the cereal box in the morning when you're eating your cereal? Just because you're, you know, it's just there. Anyone ever, anyone ever do that? Yeah, you know, you know find what the guy's picture is, you know, find these, you know. So I had the Tylenol box. So I'm sitting there at 3 o'clock in the morning just reading the towel in a box. I couldn't sleep. My mouth was sore. You know, big deal. But uh, I just was reading the directions like you normally do. You know, four tablets, or, uh, two tablets every four hours. And it said maximum of so many tablets per day. If you ever add that up every four hours, two tablets, if you take it every four hours, you've gone over the maximum dosage. You ever found that? You go check it out. You'll find out it's true. They count on you sleeping eight hours. And so I realized I haven't been sleeping. I have taken two tablets, too many. Now, what does fear do? Yeah, the rational person goes, big deal. They wouldn't even have this stuff on the shelf if it could kill you with two extra tablets. But when fear is active and you're living in a bondage of fear, what does fear say? Oh, my gosh, Gary. Will you live to see sunrise? <laughs> no, really. So I thought, well, you know, just to make this thing silent, I would call the poison control center, right? I mean, I never called them before in my life. Raised five kids, never called them. But, you know, here I am. I'm going to call them. So I call them up and I say, hey, you know, I've got this toothache. I've been taking Tylenol for every four hours, two tablets. And I've done that for a couple days. And I hear the keys. And she says this. This is exactly the first sentence she says to me. I'm not exaggerating. It's exactly. We have never had someone live that took that dosage. <laughs> I, I said... I said, wait a minute, now you, now, now you don't understand. I've only taken two, I've taken two tablets every four hours, but, you know, I took this you know, every, every four hours for two days straight. And she said, sir, I'm telling you, no one's lived that's taken that dosage. I mean, my mind's going, what? And she says, you have a choice. You can drive yourself to the hospital or we're coming after you with an ambulance. 
What are you going to do? I'll, I'll drive myself. So I go upstairs, talk to my wife. She's seen me acting weird lately. Fear does weird things to people. Phobias, you know, afraid to leave my house. That doesn't go well for sales. I mean, I'm in, I'm in definite bondage, right? I mean, I'm in trouble. And I say, Dorinda, I'm dying. <laughs> I've got to go to the hospital. <laughs> I've taken two Tylenol tablets, too many in a day. I can still see her look in her eyes. Oh, brother. <laughs> so I went to the hospital. As I pull in the parking lot of the hospital, two guys in white coats are standing at their pacing back and forth at the emergency room exit. Are you Mr. Cassie? Yes, right this way. I go into the hospital. On the big chalkboard is my name. It's already up there. Overdose, it says. Cassie Overdose. It's on the board. I mean, I've never done drugs in my entire life, but I'm on the board. Cassie Overdose. They whisk me in there. They pull blood. After a while, the doctor comes in. He goes, why are you here? <laughs> it's because I'm dying. <laughs> He goes, you don't have enough talent on your bloodstream to heal a headache. <laughs> and so I told him what the, the poison control center said. He just, he just doubled over laughing. I wasn't laughing because I got the bill, but he did. <laughs> anyway, fear will take you down a road you don't want to go down. It'll dictate your future. It'll condemn your past. It'll hold you in prison. And I am convinced we have an epidemic of fear in our country. I am convinced, in fact, the stats prove, I don't know how many, it's like 25% of all the adults are on antidepressants of some kind. We have a problem. And so we lived a life of desperation. We lived in a little farmhouse. You know, we lived there. And uh, down the street we had the, probably one of the wealthiest communities being built around our farmhouse. And Drinda always begged to go down and see these big houses. I would say no. No, I'm not doing that. No, because what would happen if I took her down there? She'd want one, right? I'm not stupid. <laughs> a farmhouse is great. Just trim the plants that are growing in the window. That's okay. It's all right. Just trim. It's, it's nice. looks nice. And that's actually what she did. She trimmed the plants because all the window frames were broken. The vines were growing through the house. You know, so it's just, this is nice. It's okay. But one year, I decided to go ahead and take her down to the parade of homes. So we went into this uh, parade of homes. And they had crown molding. They had actually crown molding. They had hardwood floors. They had shiny appliances that were stainless steel. And I could see her eyes just like, wow. And then I saw the price on this spec home. It was like $600,000. Next house, come on, come on, come on, let's go. And they're on that price range. After about seven houses, you know, we'd walk from house to house. And I stop because she's not there. It's like, well, she was right beside me a minute ago. We're, and she's back here at the steps of this other house we just left, and she's sitting there weeping with tears coming down her face. So I walk up to her, and I said, what's wrong? Like, Stupid comment. What's wrong? <laughs> and husbands ever do that? Oh, honey, what's wrong? Yeah, you know what's wrong. <laughs> when can I have a house? What, what can you say? I am trying to survive till Friday night. House? That's not even in my equation. You know, fear steals every dream you ever have. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and thanks for watching.